is uh, Richard Stathicus, who is running for supervisor here at Shelby Township. Richard, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you for inviting me. Well, first of all, let's just, how long have you been a resident of Shelby Township? Well, my family and I have been living in Shelby Township for almost 10 years, and uh, we really like it here. Okay, and, and why did you move? Well, you know, we moved for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, we heard a lot of good things about the neighborhood. And um, it's, you know, we have a lot of people living by us that are not just neighbors, but they're our friends. And, uh, you know, our kids have grown up with their kids, and uh, we've kind of grown as families, and we do things together. And it's just a nice, solid community, uh, family community. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's everything is advertised. And also, it's a nice commute for my family. Um, we're members of St. Peter Lutheran School and Church, and uh, it's two miles down the road. So it's pretty easy to go back and forth. My, my wife teaches there. Uh, she teaches fourth grade. And my kids actually uh, went through that school and uh, also through the school next door, which is Lutheran High North. Why are you seeking <clears throat> the position of supervisor for Shelby Township? Well, you know, I think there are a lot of opportunities that we're just not taking advantage of. But one I think we must take advantage of very, very soon is our spending. I want to reduce spending. You know, as you know, in public service, it's all about the people. And um, as I've been listening and reading more and more about our budget, um, I see a lot of opportunities that I think we need to take advantage of, and we're not. Um, <clears throat> as you know, um, there was an independent study done by CPA and Shelby Township right now faces a deficit of $4.5 million. I'm talking about the general budget in 2013. We have never, never had that kind of uh, deficit or been facing that deficit ever before. So, um, and that's assuming that we don't build anything. That's assuming that we just keep on paying the bills and, you know, keep on going the way we are. Now, when you throw in that building that our supervisor wants to, to, to build for $23 million, uh, which, by the way, is from 15,000 square feet to over 90,000 square feet, when you throw that in, we're looking at a deficit even larger, $5.4 million. So, yeah, we've got to roll back, uh, bring back the, uh, uh, we, we just got to be fiscally responsible. Okay. And that's one of the big, big items that uh, we need to attack okay. immediately. What, uh, what do you do for a living? What do you get paid for? Well, I'm a work comp, um, certified work comp advisor, and um, I'm one of about 250 throughout the country. Um, I, uh, I, I, what I do is I reduce costs for my customers, bottom line, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And I do that by, um, I have a patented program actually that helps my clients understand, you know, certain data points, certain trends, so we can sit down together in a language they can understand and go on and reduce their cost for workers' comp. It's not only workers' comp I handle, I also um, minimize their cost for um, other insurances as well, commercial insurance. So the, um, your occupation, what special skills for that occupation or your life experiences as a whole makes you qualified for supervisor? Well, Ron, I, I guess, you know, when you look back, um, I, I guess it goes all the way back to my kindergarten teacher. I remember one lesson, a very simple lesson she taught us, um, but one that was very memorable, a, a lesson listening. And um, she, taught, she taught us that really well. But I remember one particular lesson where one boy was just not quite listening, and he had a habit of interrupting her here and there. And one day, she actually stood up and went over to him and said, Harold, I'm going to help you become a better listener. And the lesson she was teaching for the day is when two people talk, well, someone's not listening. And if you're not listening, it means you can't learn. So, um, yeah, she went into her pocket. You know, she had this big pouch in her front pocket, and she kind of went in there. We're all wondering, what is she going to pull out today? She pulled out a roll of scotch tape, ripped off a piece, and put it right over his mouth and taped his mouth closed. And I'll tell you, it taught him. It was a very significant emotional event for him and I think for everybody in the class. But I've always remembered that. You know, you've got to listen to, in this case, what the people of Shelby Township want and what they need. And the better listeners that we are, the less likely we are you know, to, to go off into different tangents and spend money that we don't have or build buildings that we, we don't want. And, and also, you know, I was with Pepsi-Cola for about 17 years, and in my 17-year span, in the first two years, I was, I was in finance, and that really taught me a lot about fiscal responsibility. Not only did I learn a business quickly, my major was in accounting, so it was a good fit for me. But, you know, the, it was very easy to, from the numbers, to learn what the general dynamics were of the business. But what I learned is that when expenses, when the revenues didn't come in, expenses were immediately adjusted. If the, uh, if the revenues were below target, then the expenses were reduced. And that was, those were always very tough decisions to make. 
Um, so fiscal responsibility is one thing. And then later in my career at Pepsi, I was actually managing three states. I had a multi-million dollar budget, and I was over uh, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee. And I remember, um, you know, all the best ideas didn't come from me. They came from the people I managed. And they got their ideas from the performers, the people on the street. So when we put together our plan and our budget, you know, it was actually from the ground up, from the people, from the performers. We always like to say from the top down because the performers were on top in our organization. And we had three great years. And I was promoted not because of my ideas, but because of the people working for me did their jobs well in listening um, to, to the performers and fiscally managing their budgets the way they needed to be managed. And it was all about teamwork, working together. So th those are skill sets I think I learned. Listening, fiscal responsibility, and um, you know also uh, teamwork. Very good. What do you think, and you can talk about the finance again if, they, if you feel so, the greatest concerns <laughs> facing Shelby Township in the future? Well, you know, I, I hate to keep bringing up the spending, but it really is a paramount issue here. Um, we have we are coming off of eight years where we've had record amounts of uh, amounts of people coming in to Shelby Township, and the revenue has been coming in like it's never been coming in before. So why is it at the end of this eight-year great period that we have no money? Not only do we have more money, not only do we have enough money, but our general um, deficit, we're deficit spending for our general um, uh, budget. That just doesn't make any sense. And we cannot keep doing this for much longer. And as I said, according to that report, um, things look very gloomy, especially if some of these other wild ideas, like a $50 million campus, if those actually come true, I don't know where that money's going to come from. And quite frankly, I'm not sure where $23 million or even $10 million is coming through. But I've got to say one thing. We do need to do something with that police department. It is much too small, and we've got to do something with that courthouse. No question about it. But whatever it is we do, we have to make sure that the people are on board. We have to put it to a public vote. So, uh, but one thing that we, we, I, I will commit to is that we have to have a first-class fire, uh, police, and uh, emergency medical service in this, in this township. What do you think the greatest asset is for Shelby Township? Oh my, it's the community in general. It's a great community. Um, uh, it's a great community, safe, a lot of great activities. Uh, it's got a lot going for itself. You know, a lot of people talk about the trees and it's very, very pretty, but it's, it's, it's a community that, that I think people um, have enjoyed and will continue to enjoy bringing up their families, just like we have. And, and the schools are very good as well, so. And here's the million dollar question. Yeah. Those voters out there that are watching today, what, why should they vote for you for supervisor for Shelby Township? Well, as I said, my number one priority is to reduce spending, bring back fiscal responsibility by, by, by a lot. That is number one. But also, I want to make a commitment, and I, I think the people expect this commitment, that n I will not, and no supervisor should ever bond, should ever bond any capital project without having a public vote first. And that's, that's number two. And also, I want to restore teamwork and respect um, to the Board of Trustees and also to my directors. If I'm elected, I want to work with my directors and I want to work with the Board of Trustees. They're not going to be my ideas. They're going to be ideas from all of these people who will go to their performers and get some ideas. Just like it worked at Pepsi, it can work here as well. So that's, that's what I want to do. I want to return respect and uh, teamwork um, to the supervisor position and get this township going like we need to, like we need to get it going. Yep. So I ask, I ask everybody on Shelby Township, it, I hope you agree it's time for a change. And if you do, please, I ask you for your vote. Excellent. Well, Richard, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. Today.